as many of you know, we've last left off in How to Be an Emperor at the Hunting Room Midiwi, where we became the Emperor for a couple of days, only to be woken up rudely at the Hunting Room Midiwi by an old man saying that uh, we've been asleep and, hey, you're finally awake. So, um, we're just going to pick up things here, um, and Lalim would then hopefully go to Red Run and pick up a carriage towards Markov. Because that is where we will start our journey. Um, so, Hester's Nest is in its essence a... What you call it? A new lands mod developed uh, by, the, by the AU students, for the AU and for all the fans. And this new lands mod will take us to the lovely valley called Hestor's Nest, that's somewhere between Markarth and Hammerfell. Specifically south west of the Duadak Mountains. Or the Duadak Mountain Range. Um, yeah, we've we've already decked out our character just a tiny bit, since uh, there was not that much playtesting to be honest when it came to the difficulty of encounters and fights. So we recommend that any player uh, will start this new lands mod on an already existing character who's no, level 10, level 15, and got some good gear under their belts because they will be facing off against a couple of Heck Ravens, some high level 4 so on. And I think we were just talked to by a courier at the same time we stepped into the carriage. Whoops. Good old carrier. Yeah, so, let's start it. Stop complaining. It's bathing season in Stress Mackay in three weeks. If we want to win that Miss Hammerfell contest, we need to look our best. Wait, does that mean we need to go through that pass again to reach Hammerfell? Please don't say we do. Because of all that world surrounding Ulfric, we do. Not one of my many schools could convince the captain guarding the southern border to let us through. There should be someone in that old inn that can show us how to get to Stross Mackay. I heard he was able to get past those... maniacs. So, this was our first um, bit of, of info on, on Hesos Nest. Um, Lalem, if you could up the, the voice volume a bit, that would be awesome. Uh, yeah, put just the voices up and maybe the music a bit down so that it doesn't overlap. There we go. Thank you very much. So, uh, these two lads, uh, Valenlianus oh. and Camellus. Hi, what a sight. You've been through Skyrim a lot, have you? Yes, so, um, these two lovely chaps have been voice acted as well by our lovely voice actors. And I just need to quickly open up the actual sheet that, that names them, because I don't. It's by, by heart. I'm sorry. Um, let's see. But yeah, so, uh, these other chaps have been talking about their, their travels to Hammerfell, and their, their need to participate in the Miss Hammerfell contest. Um, so let me just quickly take a quick peek at the voice acting students. So, we've had... Uh, uh, past. Um, so, we've had Vanillianus, um, voiced by Zealot Elite, and Caramelis, voiced by Zeke. So, these two um, were students I asked. And they're just swirling around to the beach. I've been looking for you. Looks like that's it. And yeah, so again, um, a recording will be available later on YouTube, and the mod itself will be uploaded to the Nexus. Um, let me just quickly take a look at the other. So we do not have custom weathers at Hesos Nest. Hesos Nest is a very small collaboration. Um, so it, it wasn't too long or too big. Um, Hesosness is also not a part of Beyond Skyrim. We are uh, acting independently of Beyond Skyrim. So this is um, 
this is just something for the AU as a means of learning. We are not canon, and you will soon notice that Hester's Nest has a way lighter tone than, well, lighter tone in, in terms that we are a bit more, we, we are a bit less, um, what do you call it, a bit less serious about how intricate our, our storylines are and how world ending the threat will be. So, um, we, you need only basic experience to uh, join Hester's Nest and, uh, sorry, jo join the next student collaboration project. And um, just as a small side thing, I would appreciate if you would not talk in the in the in channel voice chat, uh, so no, no, not in the in voice chat, in in voice chat channel, but instead in the uh, lecture hall chat that's under voice channels in the Discord. Just so that I don't need to actually open up the other um, other chat regularly, because it will essentially appear on the top right corner of the of the recording. Ah, a visitor. Oh. If you drink too much, you're out. No drunks, just street friend. So, um, yeah, this is all told, as mentioned by Caramelos and Vanellianis. Uh, where there's there's supposed to be some way in here to reach Hammerfell. And, you know, someone left a note, and, oh boy, I wonder where that note would be. Lalem, do get the note, please. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <clears throat> so, in the note it says, Caramelianus, Vanellianus, I'm already on my way to Hammerfell. I ate too many sweet rolls, so I needed some extra, some extra intense exercise to reach Stross Mackay with a proper body fit for the beaches. A detour to Osinium should do the trick. Since you too want to go to Stross Mackay directly, you will need to get through these maniacs at Hester's Nest. They're friendly, so you don't need to use your good looks to get past them. But by Morwa's arms, don't get involved in their antics. The hidden entrance to their settlement is southwest of Pure Water 1, where I gave you these swimming lessons all those years ago. I will be awaiting you in I will be awaiting you two in Stross Mackay. So long, suckers. So, um, yeah, now we have our marking for where actually Hester's Nest is going to be. It's going to be a way off past a, a conveniently named Windbreak Cave. <laughs> and... Mama, where did Papa go? He's off. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> yeah, so, um, Lalim, if you would be so nice and head towards Windbreak Cave, um, which... Not at all is a is an innuendo in, in and of itself. Um, so, Hesus Nest was developed starting in, I think we started around September last year, um, with a very very enthusiastic group of students, who almost all got their got their uh, claims ready and uh, locked and loaded for everything. So the way that the student collaboration uh, or the next one will work is that you can essentially um, just raise your hand when we ask who wants to help out. And once you do, you will be given a role. And then you will be given access to the Trello board, where we have a neat to-do list of everything uh, that we need. The, the department leads will I'll be <laughs> the department leads will all be people that uh, do work up beyond Skyrim and they are the ones alongside the teachers that you will uh, work together with to get your claims uh, into a presentable shape and yeah the, the, the difficulty is is acceptable um, we've, we've, we've been doing some we've been running some tests earlier um, it would have been worse for me if I were to stream. So we just have chosen Lalem since Lalem has Discord Nitro. Hoping that, you know, it would be not that bad. But obviously, um, if you are unsatisfied with how it looks on stream, you're always more than welcome to download the mod yourself and check it out for yourself. So here we are in Windbreak Cave. This cave has been level designed by a certain Chinese. Shyness and has been 
and I think Mike did some fixes for it. Um, Mike has since become on to become a Beyond Sky member, who I think has been doing some work over Not Mora. And I think Shyness has been doing stuff over at Sky Olivia, if I'm not correct, so if I'm not wrong. Opening the the trailer watches just to see if everything's right that, that, that I don't make any mistakes here. <clears throat> yeah, the, the 30 FPS is on, is on purpose just so that uh, the extra F FPS don't uh, do you know that <laughs> essentially we didn't want to we didn't want the, ex the the stream quality to be even worse. Um, yeah, in the window. I don't know if that would work, chat. But yeah, this is Windbreak Cave. Um, it's a bit... I mean, it's, it's it's different from the other caves you see in Skyrim. It's a bit more vertical in, in nature. And also a bit more open-ended, which is definitely welcome, a, a welcome change. Um, so while Alan is still looking for the exit, which should be somewhere nearby, I think that's the wrong way. You might want to... Yes, it's, uh, you know, just keep to your right and you should be able to find the exit somewhere there. It's a big cave, so um, it might it, it might take a bit to um, venture through this cave. Obviously, we have also uh, hidden quite a few things over in Windpack Cave. But I don't know if we're going to show them all off. And I think uh, we can keep this for the players to see what else um, there might be. Yes, we did have a showcase of the, of the first two VAs yet, Clock. Um, those being the voices of Carmelius and Vanillianis. Uh, those being Zealot Elite and Zeke. <coughs> oh, um, apparently we've got too many people in the voice chat. <coughs> oh well. <laughs> Um, I don't know what to do against that, <laughs> about that. Um, since it would be fairly difficult to have, um, to set up the same thing twice. Um, but yeah. We've got Pat, who is currently streaming as Lion Number 2. Let's see if it works. Hello, Lion Number 2. And this is also one of the re reasons why having a level up character might do the trick, because I don't know if a level 1 character will want to fight against a troll here. But there it is, the Marvel exit. Um, and on the other side, we will venture into Hestra's nest, and that kid is missing his hair. Ooh. Yeah, we can set the game out to 12 for some daylight. I think we can just let the whole thing speak for itself. Valim, can you open up the, the, the can you up the music a bit? And just, just waltz towards Hestra's Nest, that being the village. That'd be great. Thank you. The old session has been recorded, yes. And this has been uh, composed by Natalia Popova. I hope I pronounced it correctly. So, yeah, welcome to Hester's Nest, Traveller. <laughs> 
Um, this is a small valley between Hammerfell and High Rock. It has been taken over by the Forsorn. And um, we're currently making our way into the actual village itself, as it has a small village attached to it with, I believe, six houses. Uh, technically seven, but one house has been mysteriously boarded up, as the tenants couldn't have been implemented in time. So, as part of this this uh, little mod, we have um, a grand total of three quests that the player can play, as well as a handful of NPCs, um, two of which actually voice acted. Um, unfortunately, due to a um, so we didn't have really have enough voice actors, so a couple of voices or a couple of NPCs um, have been left unvoiced and this um, now it has <coughs> sorry now it has 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 uh, taken upon herself to to add a uh, voice VA so an AI that sings up voices and <coughs> yeah so a couple of NPCs might have a bit of a robotic voice but um, Yeah, so as part of Hester's Nest, we also have a couple, um, a couple <laughs> world encounters. Since we are still technically in Skyrim, the Skyrim world encounters are still there. Here we are in the village of Hestra's Nest, which has been never designed by Cannoneer Mike. The region we just went through, um, which has been lovingly uh, dubbed Northwest, has also been never designed by Mike. <coughs> and yeah, um, it's, a, it, it's a fairly size of a village, despite how few um, houses there are. But nonetheless, we do actually have a couple NPCs to talk to. Um, let's say, let's, you know, we can get started with house number two, I'd say, since that's the, um, that's the voice acted one. And I think the best stuff could, should, should come first, since our voice acting students have been done, have been doing a marvelous job. So, Lalem, would you, uh, please look at the in-game time? How, how late is it? It's 1 p.m. Okay, so first up, we were probably going. To, we are probably going to need um, a certain Stone Twitch Quicksilver, who is an NPC that has been voiced by. Let me just put the over. So, um, Stone Twitch Quicksilver can currently be found uh, inside his home. So, Lionel will need to get in quickly, talk to him quickly, because we weren't really able to set up the crime factions correctly. <laughs> Um, Alan, before you break in, could you lower the, voice, the, the music again a bit, so that we can hear the voice? Um, and Stone Tush has been voice acted by Superwits, one of our uh, voice acting students. <laughs> Taking the easy way, I see it. <laughs> Oh, for that. Do you so, yeah. smell that, my friend? The kick silver, it's potent here. I can smell the toe. Such a pronounced aroma. I would never hurt you, my friend. Just try and sniff. See if you can smell it. Oh, uh oh, that's not good. <laughs> smell the toe. I'm sorry you cannot enjoy such wonderful scents. I wish everyone could. So delightful. I have heard about a grand toe. 
the toe of Lorcan. It is said to be a vein of magical quicksilver bigger than white gold. Yes, it is white silver. I travel to every corner of Hammerfall, finding never the post of quicksilver there was. None of them had the toe. Then I got a scent. It was so pungent, salivating even, hypnotizing. I had to follow the smell. It led me to this valley. The toe is here. I think so too. You are a friend of Stone Tush. You do not tell me to shut up about the toe or try to eat my heart. Thank you. I think it's deep below, but the Tottery Tunnel is dangerous. Too dangerous for me to go, but I'll find the toe eventually. Gold? Ugh, disgusting smell. I cannot stand it. Too shiny, too heavy. Breaks too easily. No, kick silver strong. Sturdy. When I was free, I found many mines, and everyone wanted to give me gold. I gave it all to someone else. Then they built me a large house, but I said, why do I need the house? I need to find the toll, not a place to die. You truly wish to help, my friend. Could you be the knight in shiny armor leading me to the kick silver, to the toe of a dead god? The tottery tunnel that the toe is located within is rife with danger. When I first arrived, it had been locked for safety. It's full of tiny trolls. Yes, small trolls, tiny even, undersized, by many times. Maybe three? I'm not sure. Their tiny size seems to make them angrier and smaller. If you can clear the tottery tunnel, then I can sniff my way to the toe and your name will be etched upon its toenail. Go see Fenway. He has the key to that rusty gate. The other residents don't trust me with it. I wonder why. Awesome, and now we've got our first quest but uh, the <laughs> since we are technically trespassing Fenway might not be very happy about us um I don't know how we can fix this which is a small issue <laughs> but yeah so um this was stone toe a uh, stone tush oh. can you see if you can just disable it and enable them again maybe that will reset their their aggression levels Yeah, so, um, Stone Tush has been written by uh, J. Boz and, well, voice part of Super Wits. And the next guy over there, who's also uh, working at us, Fenwell Nenoka, has been written by Legitimate Girth and is being voiced by Kain Mux. Does it work? Enable. Um. <clears throat> Welcome. Oh, this. Oh, awesome. Night. Okay, they're, they're back. Don't drink the stuff they sell in the nearby inn. It's making people sick. Let's do the standard dialogue first, Lalem. The middle one. I would be working in the Tottery Tunnel, but some creatures have gone and mucked that place up. I stay busy, though. The locals seem to appreciate me working. Me and my roommate work down there on a regular day. And despite everything, I am happy to be here. What would a sober paradise be without a little trouble? Mm. 
Stone Tush? Yes, he is a strange one. Not the type a typical Nord would enjoy hanging around. But a true Nord, like myself, knows to least tolerate their neighbors, no matter how strange or backwards they may seem. <laughs> Whatever keeps you spinning, you should watch yourself around here. Alcohol is not something you should take lightly. You could tumble headfirst into a trap, or a ditch, or you could barf your innards out. Avoid it. <laughs> yes, only a true Nord like myself can appreciate that, it seems. No drunken brawls in the inn, no one puking onto my tools. Skyrim is a pit of blubbering alcoholics who have long forgotten their ways. A Nord is calm, collected, and firm. Not laying drunk in some ditch. But here, there's almost no alcohol. Sure, there's the occasional trader that took a wrong turn somewhere, but they don't stay long. These Forsworn usually just grab the traders and all their alcohol and take them away. Serves them right for selling that stuff in the first place. Was it that obvious? It poisons your stomach, your muscles, and your mind. No, no. A true Nord doesn't need that to stay strong and stay warm. A true Nord, like myself, honors my duties. A lot, actually. I take care of the tottery tunnel, you see. I keep the mining tools clean and sharp. Then I deal with that weird lizard that probably has a rock lodged in between his ears. Weird fella. But he doesn't drink, which is good. Yes, I just couldn't stand what these foul drinks were doing to my kinsmen. Especially after. Never mind. Please, not now. Perhaps another day when I... Not now. Okay. Finally, someone willing to help. I have the key here. But before I give it to you, I have a few questions. Has Stone Tush told you about his toe of silver yet? Ha! <laughs> That's a fool's errand. Toe of Lorcan. Ridiculous. You are helping me, a true Nord, by clearing this mine, though. I wish you luck in your endeavor, but may I ask you one small favor? <laughs> As you might imagine, a roommate running his forked tongue about some toe non-stop can be off-putting to even the truest nods. Once you've cleared the mines, tell him that there is no hope of finding that toe there. It's for the best that he thinks it's elsewhere. Here's the key. Be on your way now. Right, so that was Fenway. Fenway was written by Legitimate Girth and voice acted by Kain Mux. And now we are on our way to clear out the Tottery Tunnel from Tiny Trolls. Um, oh, you can actually see our map here. Awesome, yeah, so, um, that is up, up there. So it's gonna take us just a tiny bit. Um, yeah, we've been going all the way up here and I think you can head to Tottery Tunnel next island. The rest will be explored later. So, uh, the animations that Fenway just did, those aren't custom. Uh, they're in-game, they're in base Skyrim. It's just that uh, they're not used too much in base Skyrim because, I don't know, maybe they dislike that. And, oh, look at that, we even have our, <laughs> our own custom 3D stuff. So, those were the dandelions, um, which were made by... Oh, okay, let's use our sneak with that. Dandelions, which were, let me quickly take a quick peek, were made by Dr. Pembleton. And they have their own set of magical uh, properties if you want to use some alchemy. 
We also have some pottery done. Uh, flower pots made by Tent and Five. After some uh, cottage art made by Tapping Spy. So yeah, maybe the in the inhabitants of um, Hester's Nest fancy themselves some some pot uh, some pottery. There's also a crate that is new, um, which has been made by Doctor Pemberton as well. After concept art. Uh, made by Bearded Sultan. And they look really good to me, honest. <laughs> like, pause the, the, the dandelions, uh, the crates, all marvelous. Later, we also have a drinking mug, but I think we can just show that whenever we get into an exterior, in, 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 into an interior next. Hmm, I love grease. So, um, these two chaps that we are currently doing their bidding for, uh, the quest is called A Great Big Toe. It all deals with um, Stone Tush, who is obsessed with finding a certain big toe of Lorcan, which, uh, as he explains, is a great vein of Quicksilver that has been, that should be hidden somewhere in the Tottery Tunnel, a mining uh, mine <laughs> here in Hester's Nest. So, obviously, since uh, the mine is overrun by tiny trolls, we are sent to investigate and uh, unfold the area and see if this Toe of Lorcan really is there or if it's unknown, if it's just some, some weird foot that some guy lost. Yeah, um, some unfortunate misadventures that that come along with, I don't know, a steep incline. I wouldn't really want to have to walk up here every time, or at least, you know, the, or even ride a carriage up here. Um, the download link will be available after we're done with this stream here. It will be all uploaded to the Nexus for you to play yourself and look for some details because. Uh, at least I, as, as, since I've done the level design of this place here, uh, I've, I've hidden a couple of things left and right. So you might think, you know, you might find a, a cool little trinkets here and there. Those are just iron ingots. <laughs> but yeah, the player has been given the key to the Tottery Tunnel uh, by Fenway. And now it's on to a dungeon crawl. Um, but not before I tell you who actually did this thing. So let me just quickly take a quick peek. Tartary Tunnel was uh, LD by Bathrin59. I don't know if they're here, but you can probably already hear the, 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 the tiny trolls. And yeah. <laughs> We've had a couple of instances here. So, I cannot believe that of all places we are stuck here. The gutter between two of the greatest lands of Tamriel. I suppose it matters little. I came here to swing my pick and earn an honest living. That's what I intend to do. So. But, um... <laughs> my friend Ufius said he heard scratching from the rocks. I hope it isn't beginning to lose it. So, yeah. Some disgruntled miner um, figuring out that there might be some scratching here or there. And we can already hear and see the tiny trolls. Um, they're not as tiny as, we'd have li as we would have liked to, but they're, um, they're teenager size. They're tiny for a troll. And as you can see, they've, they've thoroughly thrashed this place up. They're yes, they are called smalls, because they are small trolls. So, objective here is to clear them all out, which Dalem is doing so with precision and with a very fancy axe. Oh, another one! To the tunnel, obs 
to, to the tunnel over here. There's something off about this place. It is unnerving, but it is certainly confusing. The Quicksilver seems to simply regenerate? It's difficult to describe. We had ten men on one wall and dug out a massive vein of Quicksilver. The next day it was back, as if they had never mined a thing. To the other miners, the other miners don't seem to be too worried. There are also rumblings that it might be the finest Quicksilver they have ever seen. The scratching is getting louder though. Maybe that's the Quicksilver regenerating. <laughs> I'm not sure. Either way, we have hit pay dirt. So, um, slowly but surely we can unravel the lore of this place. Um, there's a lot of Quicksilver here. And that Quicksilver seems to regenerate. Which might or might not have attracted some trolls here. Who knows? It smells like it smells like small. <laughs> so yeah, Adam is further going to um, make the. It's, it's, it's further going to get the amount of acceptable troll infestation uh, closer to zero. While Iron Dagger. Yeah, since these trolls are not that big, they are probably also a bit less beefy. Um, they carry around regular troll ingredients, though. So, unfortunately, you're not going to see any unique, I don't know, troll fingers. Yes, the unique cave design is amazing. Um, especially in comparison to vanilla, where a destroyed mine looks like a very pristine mine, if you ask me. Um, we actually ran into a, a funky little issues with these smalls. So, uh, Nello, Thorn and I tried to implement them properly by giving them a unique model. Uh, not a unique model. Oh, right, a mug. And some cheese! Uh, the cheese is not new, but the mug is. Or the, the, the mugs are. Um, and the mugs have been made by... Let me, take a, let me just quickly score through it. So the drinking mug has... is Oh, it was actually a, a 3D claim only. So there was no uh, concept art for it. But the, uh, the lad who did it um, was Reedy. Reedy, the guy with the eyeball. I hope that their Trello name is similar to their Discord name. Uh, and no, this mod is not canon. It can be, if you ask Illegate Bay nice enough, but I doubt that they're going to make use of it. Um, that, that, that being said, this entire mod is just a little, you know, it's just a after, after class exercise for our students here. Which means that uh, they put everything together. All I, um, all that I did, which was all that the writing lead did when it comes to like law and 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 characters, whatnot, I only gave like a very short prompt for an NPC. Um, for example, the prompt for Fenwell Nenoka was uh, cannot hold their liquor and is terrified of the thought of others finding out. Or the prompt of Stone Tish Quicksilver, which you've always, uh, which you've always also saw. On. Scene, is uh, thinks he is part of a mining excavation to develop a quicksilver mine beneath, deep beneath the mountains. And um, yeah, the students just played along with these prompts and made up their own characters with it. There we go. We are almost done. There's only one tour remaining. And it's time for item to find them. Yeah, I think there were three notes. I'm not sure where the, three, where the third one was, though. I think it's a corpse near the last troll. We've got two so far. There's only one missing. Uh, but that being said, there's also, you know, there's not that many corpses in here. Uh, the, the trolls probably picked them off clean. There we go. So, 
We're done with the trolls. Let's actually do what we are being sent to as well and look for the Tower of Lorcan. Um, on second thought item, I don't know if we actually have three nodes. It might, it might just be two. <laughs> So it is time to search for the uh, Tower of Lorcan, the marvelous regenerating vine of Quicksilver, or Quicksilver. And luckily for us, we've got a handy dandy compass to point us towards the direction. Where we'll certainly find something, right? The Great Sniffer! Is it you? Have the prophecies come true? The one who will usher in a new age. The Sniffer. Who shall take the reach. And paint the mountain silver. The Sniffer. Who shall unearth white silver and forge a new empire. The voices have yet to mislead. They are also very persistent. The small ones have told me of your arrival. They have told me, and so I've waited. Yes, I've waited for you, oh, great sniffer. Let's go with the last one, the darling. Oh. Have come true. <laughs> Cyrodiil, Nathamriel shall quake. Use the toe to unearth the white silver. With it, no one will stand a chance. Yes, Larkan shall be reborn, and his godly light shall engulf the world. Time to choose, Lalem. The Sniffer shall unearth white silver. Do what the Sniffer should do. Dig or... Unearth or... Only the Sniffer knows what the Sniffer ought to do. You are not the Sniffer. You... No. You're worse. Liar! Traitor! You are not who I was waiting for! Oh, time to find an old guy. <laughs> Need to kill him, Lalem. <laughs> With your dagger. <laughs> so, um, as common for Skyrim dungeons, there's always some weird old man hiding in a cave, thinking that you are the sniffer. And luckily for us, he wasn't too strong. But he's got a lot of quicksilver with him. So yeah, we've certainly found out that the that the promised Toe of Lorcan was real. Uh, that there's a giant quicksilver vein here, which you can see all around the place. And now it's up to the player to decide, okay, should I uh, tell Stone Tish that the sniff that the, that the uh, Toe of Lorcan is real? Or should I lie to him, as Fenways have has suggested, to, you know, uh, get him to leave? Because by all accounts, Stonefish might just have a vein of silver between his ears. The choice will be up for Lydum to decide. Um, all I can say is that this quest has two different endings, and there's two different quest rewards. So let's see if Lydum picks the right choice. But yeah, so, um, the old man, or the, the real old man, was written by both Jebos and Legitimate Girth as part of the quest document. And um, he's been voice acted by Internet Vix... Vixtim. Who made a, you know, breathe a lot of life and especially enthusiasm into the real old man. Down. 
multiple takes. Yeah, I think they, they've, they've put in a lot of work for this. And now it's just time to report back to uh, Fenway. First. Oh, I'm sorry, no, to report to Stonetish, not to Fenway. Um, but first, we probably need to actually take a quick peek onto the in game clock to see that we don't disturb them. Because the last time they got a bit angry. 9 pm. Uh, 9 pm. Stonetish should be at his home, which uh, puts a bit of a damper onto things. So we might just take a crash at the end and wait until, uh, let's say, 7 a.m. Oh! <laughs> Another one of our NPCs, seemingly late for the next iteration on their, um, their schedule. But yeah, I think... Um, oh, it looks like the... That's a quest marker point towards Sontish being outside. If so, we might just we might still be able to catch him. You should meet my oar sometime. Tell me, tell me, did you find white silver? Time to choose, Alam. The first one is uh, the you know you, you don't lie to him. The other one is you lie to him. Is there is there a toe block in there or is there not? Let's see what what what, what chat wants wants us to to go for. Don't lie. Okay, truth. Tell the truth. Can't lie to him, be nice, truth. Okay, I think we're gonna go with the first one then. The voices spoke through the big door of Lorcan himself. After all this time, I have found it. I must go to it. Yes. I must dig, dig, and I must sniff the kick silver. Yes, I must go. Take this. Now I must go. There is much to do, much to snare. Hey, and that was the first quest. The law, the the great the the great toe of Lorcan. Um, we even got a little um, souvenir for it. Lorcan's pickaxe, which has a unique uh, enchantment. Thanks, Neldor. Um, I was one. Mm -hmm. Sorry? And he found him. And then he died. It's an actual option. But yeah, so. A new option. Um, this mod does not have a main quest, no. Um, just because, due to the fact that we had a couple of students in here, that, we just had like a lot of students here, and. Um, it was difficult to coordinate things as is. A whole main quest would have been way too much. Uh, this quest has three. So, sorry, this mod has three quests, and this is also one of our uh, custom assets: the statue of the village hero. And I think, yeah, we can visit the tavern next. That's the Riften-looking one. I think the bench is, is, is best left off as the, the, the last place we visit. So this is house number four, the nesting nut hatch. Uh, as a thing to just mention, everyone here has been uh, voice acted by an, by, by an AI. Just because we ran out of, level of, of voice actors. And a couple of things to, to mention first though. Um, this thing, so th this house has been never designed by a skiver. Um, which means that, uh, yeah, how do I put this? Um, he can't, he can't be here today. So, um, we chose to keep the claim as is and leave it in its a bit unfinished form, but we've got a little skiver here to keep us company. And there's also a couple NPCs here. Don't worry, the, the, the skiver is, is, is friendly. A bit of First up is Garok. Don't drink the stuff they sell in the nearby inn. 
It's making people sick. Oh, don't <coughs> mind him. I found him in one of my wine barrels a while ago having the time of his life. Ten is a dome, so he's got a new home here. He protects the end from moldy food and people trying to skip out on a tab. So pay for your drinks or he'll nibble on your ankles. No, we don't. The Wathgarian mountains don't let the common traveler pass it that easily. Running the inn isn't so bad, but I do miss journeying across the reach. I ended up here after an unfortunate rock slide injury of my leg. It never truly healed, so I settled down. I miss exchanging stories with other people. If you've got the time, I'd love to share some with you. Markarth means above the Karth in the Reach Tongu, which we no longer speak. Simple and descriptive. Did you know the Reachmen once ruled Seradio? The rulers were called the Longhouse Emperors. Um, they are a very new group of people. I don't believe they represent us. The Nords have wrote them with silver and blood. Us, the common folk, are stuck between them. I, my brother, would have had something to say. But he has sadly left me here and joined the gods. Tullus has brought the Reachmen. Edum, he's worse than Shia, I'd say. Stay safe. Wouldn't want the one visitor I've had in a decade to end up dead. Yeah, that is the innkeeper. Um, Garok has been written by... Give me a second to find his... There we go. Has been written by Tugin. And yeah, so as, as I was... Uh, as I was saying, all these NPCs have electronic voices as an AI had to voice act them because we didn't have enough voice actors. So for the next one, please join as a voice actor and join as level designer and implementer and 3D and 2D and sound and writing. Um, oh. Since this station was assembled by request, anyone using it responsible everyone using it is responsible if they break it. I don't supply ingredients myself, but if I have any, I'll be more than happy to sell them for a mutual for a, for a mutually <laughs> beneficial gain. Oh, that took a bit. Yeah, so a lot of these little design pieces have um, just a few things hidden in them. And yeah, that's. I think we have a couple more people in the inn, but I don't. Oh, they even home, even better. Some help with Alchem. Have you seen any crimson noon roots? I've heard amazing stories. It's as good a place as any to lie low. The whole valley is filled with misfits and outcasts, so I blend in easily. <laughs> Need some help with alchemy? What is there to tell? I'm a Breton and an alchemist, and there are some really unique ingredients in Hestra's nest. Ipsala, for example, has a rare frenzy property in its leaves, that's pretty rare, I can tell you and people pay a lot of money for it. But a lot of my expertise comes from my time in Daggerfall, the true home of alchemy. Political intrigue plus myriad poisons and potions makes for great fun, at least it did. I was forced to leave my home and my life and drifted here. I hail from Daggerfall, a city of culture and a city of space. No, I wasn't a spy. I was a politician. I ranked high above your thanes, perhaps even as high as the Jarl of a hold. Sometimes, I admit, I assumed an identity, but that had nothing to do with my job. I was cultured, I was finest, to tell you the truth, I loved it. I had a real say on important matters, and then it was all ripped away. Keep a withery on Daggerfall for me, would you? Hey, good to see you again. You know the Bard's College in Solitude? The one in Daggerfall is thrice this size. There are galleries and theaters and sculptures and stages. It's a city of wonder and a city of love. My love had to leave her behind. I thought it would be safer, but now I'm not so sure. Maybe I should have brought Ma with me. She's my love, that's all you need to know. I probably shouldn't have told you in the first place. 
Yeah, so that is oh, Benalik. Daggerfall for me, would you? Um, an outcast from Daggerfall, of all places. Um, she's been written by Seth Lewis and also didn't get a proper voice actor. Hey, good to see you again. I think that's all for this particular uh, house, though. So, um. Let's say we just sit down and wait for the next day to start, because a lot of the schedules are, uh, you know, depending on the time. <laughs> this, this, yeah, let's just wait until like, I don't know, 8 a.m. Just for everyone's schedules to align properly again. Since I think we're gonna next up chat with um, Goloch and Analia, two more NPCs that have been written. But unfortunately not voice acted. Oh, someone forgot the dagger here. And next up, I would like you to head uh, essentially just... Uh, head outside the village and to the ruins that I've showed you earlier. So you can just... Yeah, it, it essentially... Uh, yeah. You can just head east, essentially. You need to head east. But you need to go north to eventually get east because you don't want to tumble down a cliff, don't you? So yeah, um, we've shown ha uh, house number two and house number four as we've been calling them internally just to uh, avoid any um, confusions. But we've also come up with really nifty, like, proper nicknames for the houses. So, uh, house number two, the one with Stone Tush and with Fenway, which you've seen previously, was the Miner's Mansion. And the one you've just seen with Benalik and with Garok is uh, the Nesting Nut Hatch. And it looks like Dylan just took out a trap card. And we can also see the uh, enchantment of Lorcan's pickaxe in action. So, this pickaxe has a unique enchantment that um, everyone you kill somehow seems to carry around some ore with them. Which, you know, it's not bad, it's nice. You can always get some ore. But yeah, you can just follow the path um, until the giant scan, essentially. But there should then be a branching path to the right of it. Oh. Lalim, you there? couldn't make it so it's very very sad you could tell he was very passionate about his work and yeah so we put up a little, little skiver in the tavern to you know commemorate him and dedicate the mod to him so yeah rest in peace yeah um, below I'll put down a link to his mod I'll uh, it's currently on a, co a site called Shank and Mods. I'm really trying to see if the mod is also available on Nexus Mods. Mm. But yeah, let me just put down a link to his mod, a, a follower that, that, that he wrote and also implemented uh, into the chat here. Oh yeah, also yeah, you can, you can um, post the Nexus link in here, Adam, if you have it. This is the one that uh, I had access to. And yeah. Um, they were a great person. Um, I've chatted with them for a couple of hours and they were the, the you know, a, a, a really kind-hearted person. Um, yeah. 
and Salem is now back with Hester's Nest. Let's let's keep going, shall we? Yeah, um, we're now on our way to house number six, which is the Wound Bubble. Um, sadly, the weather, the weather isn't further for sightseeing, yeah. Yeah, you need to take the right turn here. And hopefully we will come across both inhabitants, uh, both of which has have been voice acted by the AI again. Um, but I can actually tell you uh, who wrote them. So, for the wound, um, for the wound bubble, a little wound building that uh, fell prey or fell victim to some sort of landslide, from the looks of it. Um, in it live uh, Analia Reach and Golok Alar. Golok Alar, yeah. Let's see if Analia is. Yep, there she is. Um, we can chat with her a bit. I never forget a face. You must be new. I was sent by the Guild of Historians to update our records, but our work in the Reach is new and the people have not heard of us. More importantly, they do not work with us and it is making my life difficult and he, fortunately, Gorloch humors me and my questions. The Reach and all its happenings, it's why I have my trusty book and quill, history can't happen unless we uh, write it in. It's quite a fascinating place. If you have any questions, ask away. I'll do my best to answer, though my knowledge is several years outdated. I am indeed you are talking to a true Dunmura historian, fresh out of training and happy and more than happy to serve. There is no nobler profession than remembering the epic feats of those who came before. Oh, where did I study? Just some far-flung place back in Morrowind, a smaller college. You probably wouldn't have heard of it. Unlikely, but I sure do know my stuff. Ask me anything about the Reach, anything. No, at present, the Guild has no works published in or around the Reach, nor in any tongue is commonly spoken here. Then I'll owe me to answer them, fire away. Actually, it is a territory inhabited by magic-wielding deity worshipping savages, otherwise known as the Reachmen. They are described as primitive folk, trouble, aggressive, and culturally stunted, a far cry from their Nordic and Breton peers. The people of the Forsworn, they do worship the Daedra, Malakath, Molagbal, Namura, but they are not savages, not to me anyway. It is a place that has been fiercely fought over by the Empire and the Nords, but never truly taken thanks to the tenacity of its natives. Its capital, Markarth, a former Dwemer city, is also a hobbit for conflict. As far as I knew, it still lay under the rule of King Medinech, though times have changed since my guild visited the Reach. There is talk of a man who laid siege to Markarth at the Empire's behest only to murder their emperor soon after Ulfric Stormcloak. I know too little to say more, and while it is not the end of this story, I hope your curiosity is satisfied. I don't actually know, the guild's archives are a quarter century out of date, and the Forsworn are a relatively recent development. You'll want to talk to Gorlich about this stuff. He's my campmate and a Forsworn fighter. I'm sure he'll help me answer all of my questions. I know they emerged after Ulfric Stormcloak's seizure of Markarth in Forthera, 176 following King Medinech's abdication. Their people have been fighting for the return of their land ever since. A little known fact, but did you know that back in the first era, Markarth was known as the Dwemer stronghold of Enchanzel? It was only after the disappearance of the Dwemer in the first era, 700, and the subsequent Breton habitation that it became a Markarth. I can tell you, the Dwemer origins really show in the architecture. I just wish they would let me back in so I could see it again. No, mostly due to a misunderstanding that I'd rather not get into here. Let's just say that I met with some rather high-ranking officials who disagreed with the way I conduct my research. I don't think I'll forget you in a hurry. 
So, this was Analia. Uh, Analia has been written by the marvelous Adam, who you may or may not know as... Uh, oh god, Adam is in a couple provinces. <laughs> so, he's one of my writers, Fort Mora, uh, and also a writer and editor over at Rosquare. And, oh god, where else are you, Adam? I, I, I actually don't know. <laughs> Sudo, right, I'm not in Sudo, that's why I didn't know. So, uh, could you look, take a look at, at the other um, bed wall inside the house to see if Goloch is there? If he's still sleeping or if he's... Oh, okay, then he'll, he's probably at the shrine. Uh, you don't need to wait. You can just head to the shrine, which is uh, essentially just follow the path. And there's a small clearing uh, to the left a bit, in, in just a bit, after those rocks there. Where you can head up towards the shrine. Where he's probably praying. Hey, there he is. What do you want? Come to hear an old man's ramblings, or are you interested in the worship of the Lady of Decay? Yes, yes I am. I've been her servant since my days of the rebellion when we would be covered with the Gora battle. All it took us was drinking the blood of our enemies and eating their flesh. It certainly worked. Our enemies ran screaming back to their mothers. The only thing that kept us from finally taking back our rightful lands was that damned Ulfric. What brings me to Hystra's nest? My people own these lands. We're the rightful rulers of the Reach. I was born here and I will die here, a proud and free forsworn. Ah, you wish to learn about the Mistress of Decay? She is the goddess of ultimate darkness. She watches all acts of evil and cherishes them. Her worshippers perform rituals of cannibalism, and in turn she brings us her favor. Don't worry about me though, I haven't eaten anyone for a good few months. Of course I am. Uh, I still remember my first test from back in the rebellion, never could forget it, so tender, so juicy. Not fond of him is putting it very lightly. If I had my way with him, I'd lush him to a post where beetles feast on his flesh and dogs tear open his stomach. His flesh is not even worth serving on a platter, so no, I'm not fond of Ulfric. Look, I'm no fool, I know that she's a complete idiot. It's no secret that the Dark Elf can't read as much as she might try. I'll let her learn what she wants from me though, since at least she shows a bit of respect for the coast. And who knows, if she wastes my time she might just happen to be a good meal someday. Oh, the Nords. Ah, the Nords. <laughs> yeah, so this is Gorloch. A, um, what you might call... Hardcore Force on. <laughs> um, Goloch has been written by Bam Dumpster, um, a fellow student in the AU here. Um, Dunmar <laughs> Yeah, so um, this house also has a quest attached to it, but the quest will only trigger, I think, 12 hours after you after you first talk with Goloch. So we'll first do a bit of other stuff first. Um, namely, quest number six. Oh, well, sorry, house number six. Um, with a, um, with a, an orc in dire need of friends. So, um, what's the time, Lalem? 11 a.m. Uh, he should work at the forge, so head to the, head back to town. And we'll see that if, if, if he's inside the forge, um, the house should be called the Fickle Forge, and it should be the first one to the right after the watchtower as you enter. But yeah, the weather's cleared up a bit, and now we can actually see a bit more of, of, of Hester's Nest, can't we? Um, 
so far we've actually been only in the in like half of it the the, the other half is still entirely left unexplored um, we have had a couple quests and dungeons planned over there as well but um, we kind of ran out of time and level designers and uh, yeah you know as you might see there's, there's a couple couple lost souls walking through the mountains um, probably lost their way somewhere took a wrong turn left It was. <laughs> yes, um, Hester's Nest is well, the okay. So it's big both in in, in, in scope and in landmass. Let's see if he's inside. Okay, you might need to unlock the house as well. And um, yeah, first save, unlock, and then chat with him before he has uh, b before he can actually before he can re re retaliate. Is he here? Uh, he's not. Do we? Hang on. Uh, bu -bu 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 he might be at the inn if it's past past five pm. Uh, no. Is that somewhere? Uh, yeah, might be somewhere either between here or the inn. He's a big orc. Maybe you'll find him. Oh, the forge. Right. Uh, turn right from the house. Okay. Um. No. Not that forge. So, go back to the house. And then go just behind it. Just behind the house. Haha! -ha. There he is. Why do you keep bothering me? Oh no, I'm so sorry, how can I help? So, this is oh, Parkshark. I'm sorry, sometimes the Rigmas just takes me like that. So, this is Parkshark. Barkshach Gromalak, um, a an orc, who, uh, written by Sephiroth, with their uh, prompt being that they're an orc with anger issues, but they're working on it. What? Why would you care? Nobody cares, so why should you? I mean, I'm sorry, I didn't mean that. It's just so hard sometimes, you know. Oh, it's just so hard without mum and dad. Nobody cares. Nobody listens to me. Everybody hates me here, you know? Everybody. You don't. You don't. That's wonderful, a friend. We'll go out and shop and make friendship bracelets with the fudge hand. Oh, I'm sorry. I know I'm too full on. My friends always leave because I'm too clingy, whatever that means. Are you sure you want to be my friend? You will, really? Uh, this truly is my lucky day. I finally have a friend. Well, we're going to do all sorts of things. I'm going to make us friendship bracelets from good strong steel. As long as you wear it, we'll be best friends forever. But until then, I thought we could go and pick some wool flowers. I've always wanted to do that with a friend. I'm so glad. Would you like to go now? Okay, yes, you would. I have to get some <laughs> things. I'll meet you underneath Madinja. So let's head to the Madinja, um, a major location in the north of this place. Yeah. Um, where we need to meet Barksha, and we're gonna go pick some flowers with them. Um, a very kind soul, but, you know, it's got a short temper. So, yeah, um, once again, uh, voice acted by an AI. So if you would like to have it, so to have the next uh, NPCs that we write not be voiced by an AI, play as voice actors, haha. <laughs> and yeah. Um, at the bottom of the upcoming hill to the left, we also have the relics of um, the campsite. 
Yeah. Unfortunately, the three NPCs we've written for those did not make it in game, as far as I know. Because we also didn't have any implementers for them. So the friendly fire. Um, yeah, this is missing its friends. Oh, yeah, you can just go up the, the hill here. Uh, walk the probably also 7,000 steps. Yeah, we can just marvel at the uh, the level of, carpent, of, of carpentry um, done here. Just imagine building all those wooden stairs. <laughs> But up there, we'll also find another um, custom asset, which you might already be able to peek at. Um, the Malancha tree, which is, um, imagine, imagine the Elder Gleam, just a bit bigger. It's custom enough for us. As you can see, there's also a lot of beehives in here and mountain flowers. Um, and now, I think the journal just says that we need to wait for a bit, right? Because we, we pop, okay, yeah. So uh, if you were so kind as to wait in an hour, so that Varkshach can make his way up here as well. <laughs> like, yeah. TFC. Oh yeah, we can also just, just show the entire region here. It is lovely. And if you can stand still for a couple of seconds, uh, the yeah the, um, the fog essentially clears and the quality also will get better. So yeah, Hester's Nest in all its glory. Oh, we're even getting some good, some some, some good weather for us. Thank you. But yeah, we'll also be exploring the southern half a bit more uh, once we're done with all the quests here. But yeah, um, I think Alim, we can just wait for an hour until Barkak is there. Oh, okay, he's there. <laughs> well, time for some flower picking. So yeah, um, again, um, every help, sorry, every helping hand, well, helps. <laughs> so even if you don't think you've got it, you, you you've got what, uh, you've got a voice acting, just try that anyway. What's the harm? Um, you are all more than welcome to apply for any department or every department. Um, the only thing we mentioned is that it, it might be a good idea to um, to do one step at a time, maybe two, but uh, more than three departments at, at, at a time, and uh, it might get a bit uh, cramped in your personal schedule. Uh, you've got everything. I think you can just... What? I'm so sorry, I always shout. Oh! What do you, you might... <laughs> got some company. But I deal with the company first. Yes, I am 
Yeah, get the bloodshed off his chest. <laughs> so I'd have to kill a friend by them. Yeah, and also get the door off of their buddies. <laughs> A or, but yeah, um, looks like we got a bit of uh, we got a bit interrupted there. Absolutely, it reminded me of the battles back when I was a little or when I was at the stronghold. It was weird for me. It brought back strange memories. I need to think about that later. Oh, wonderful! Let's go back to Histra's nest. Come by in the morning and I'll give you the bracelet. So now we also need to wait. <laughs> uh, weirdly enough, a lot of quests here are, well, two of the three quests have some sort of time uh, attached to them. So I guess we can just take the next few minutes to just swallow around and test a bit. Um, we can go to the south. We can check out Nerlos claim or go to the southwest and check out Isaac's claim. Yeah, the, oh, also, there's a hidden chest here, Ladam. If you were please to turn around to the root, to, to the big one, yep, and go forward and look down a bit. There might be a chest there somewhere. I think it was there, right? Keep looking, okay. Mike is the one who, who put up the chest there. Ah, look at that. It is one of the many secrets we have over at Hester's Nest, so uh, you need to explore a bit if you want to find them all. Hey, loot! But yeah, um, so. Depending on how we are feeling, we can either do some more exploration, or we can just head back to the nest to, to the nesting nut hatch and ooh. Right here. Yeah. Um he's also part of a small Easter egg. The first part of which was found at Windbreak Cave. But yeah, so uh, depending on, on how we're feeling, Adam, you can either go to the south and do do some exploration. Or you can you can head back to the nesting nut hatch and wait a bit, let's say, about a day, uh, for both quests to trigger again. Let's see what what what, what chat thinks. Do we explore, or do we just want to do some quests? Explore, explore, who else? Oh, the bracelet's important. Okay, yeah, I think we get we, we get the bracelet and then we and then we go exploring. How does that sound? Because nothing Skyrim wouldn't be Skyrim without a friend bracelet. So if you're too kind you can head back to the town and just wait until next morning. So Oh god, let me just check when exactly you need to. Let, let's, do check. Let's, let's just check when that uh, when it is triggered. Mm, after 25 hours, I've passed. Okay. Yeah, thank you, Nerdo. You can just um, either wait, at, wait in the inn or just wait right there and then where you are. Oh, we can also check. Yeah, right. The the general store. Um, Force one's findings. There there would have been three NPCs in here as well. Unfortunately, these NPCs did not make it uh, because well, we didn't. We kind of ran out of of, of implementers again. So it was 
they, they didn't make it, unfortunately. Uh, but I can actually pretty tell who is where. So, it would have been Valve Indun, uh, written by Jack, Brician Iodorius, written by Padden, and Slide Silvertooth, written by R, who's, who's, who's also watching this. Yeah, and as you can see, implementers are actually fairly important. <laughs> if you don't have them, um, yeah, you can't really put things into the game, can you? So, um, as a quick overview over the three NPCs we are unfortunately missing. We've got Valith, a rogue wizard from the Synod, who's on the run for stealing the Archmage's robes. The Synod is a major guild over in Cyrdal, so she went quite far away. Um, God knows what's, what, what, what she would have done with those robes, though. Uh, then we've got Grecian Idorius, an elderly adventurer who wanted one more final adventure. Um, I think we're going for a bit of a Bilbo vibe there. And I don't know who plays that, no long. Uh, last but not least, it would have been Slight Silvertooth, a full blooded force on general store owner. So yeah, we would have had a general store for you to pick up some stuff, but I didn't make it. Um, that's actually something that, that we are still talking about, uh, Super Bits. Um, that's always something that we need to uh, chat about in the teachers like channels. Um, if we are going to include the... Um, if we essentially have everything that's not there as a claim on the, on, on the claim board, but yeah, might also be a bit difficult with permissions on Nexus. You're jesting. You already have a room here. Yeah. Yeah, we've probably got a room, so let's kick back for like a day. Pantry. Um. Oh. Looks like Penelik is, is just in, in the wrong room, so I think you might just... You, again. you might just need to... to <laughs> <laughs> nothing ventured, nothing gained, Lalem. Hey, good to see you again. Yeah, I need to wait twenty four hours, not twelve. So, um, a couple more hours, and we should be fine. This note. And after that, you should be able to just talk with Barkchak again and uh, get your friendship bracelet. Le yeah, <laughs> lively upbeat place. I mean, you're in the middle of nowhere. Um, oh, there he is. The man of the hour. What do you want? Oh. My weapons. Who gave you the right to question my weapons? Uh, I'm s Anyways, I make all sorts of weapons and armor, although the Orsish ones are my finest. Orsish. Also, I have a forge and other blacksmithing tools. You can use them if you'll forgive me for being so mean. Oh, thank you. Yeah, you two wait, wait for more hours, Salem. Oh, it's... So, Hestor's Nest, um... The, the, the aforementioned Hestra was um, an Imperial Emperor who tried to take over the Reach, but her efforts was were, were thwarted by the legendary uh, Red Eagle. And you can just think, Nalem, you should be able to just talk with Barkshach again. What do you want from me? Oh, no, you've done it again, Barkshach. Yes, I have right here. I hope you like it. It's a symbol of our everlasting friendship. If you wear it for a month, Orsish Legion says that we'll be forever bonded in the afterlife. I'll always be happy to see you around. Yeah, so if you want to figure out who Hesra is, you better take up a book called The Legend of the Red Eagle and read it. <laughs> 
There we go. Dark Shots Friendship Bracelet. Since he's an orc, it's it's a ring. <laughs> awesome, yeah. Um What's next? We've waited a day. So we might as well go back to the ruined rubble and chat with our our full blooded uh you know force on. Yeah, and as, you know, since this is the reach we're talking about, we're still in the reach technically, or somewhere in the reach, um, obviously there's going to be a couple of force on. Oh, Alan? Oh no, not again. To quickly interject, this is not an issue. This should not be an issue. This should not be an issue with the mod. The mod should be fine. We've tested this. Hey, we've got a friend. Okay. Okay, Adam. Now for the for the shortcut. You see that dog statue over there? Run past it. That should you that should put you right uh, near the ruined bubble. Uh, but first, you should uh, enable God mode (TGM) in the console first, because I think even a Dragonborn wouldn't want uh, broken limbs. Here we go. It's this, yeah, it's a shortcut to the wound bubble. You can see it. <laughs> How do you know that? Uh, I did the level design for this region. Um, everything from the start of the Hester's Nest entrance, where we uh, started, to this place, basically. And you should be able to talk with Garok uh, next, or, sorry, with, with, with Gorloch, who should be next to the altar, I'd assume. Um, so the altar. Do you mind giving us the current time again, Lalem, so I can check with the character sheet? It's 7 pm. Uh, ba -ba -ba Second. So, I've got Gorlock's character sheet. Um, from, from 5 pm to 10 pm, he should sandbox around the camp and village. So he's somewhere around the village if if you if you just find someone um who's floating yeah uh, if all else fails um wait until like 10 pm or like uh, wait until midnight to come home again yeah let's just wait until midnight or like that yeah he should be then at his home, or at his house. Okay, time to wait two more hours then. Or three, yeah. Uh, oh, there he is. You. I need your help. You know the girl, Analia. She's demonstrated an interest in my ways, and I think it's time to take the first step. You will gather three things for me to perform the ritual, the child's doll, the ham and heart, and the potato. After that, we begin the more complicated process of acquiring a ceremonial reachman headdress, but we'll worry about that later. For now, the doll, heart, and potato will do. 
and soon the ritual will be underway. Okay, you can chat with Grolok again, I think, to pick up hints on where these things are. Nope, there you can't. Tongue. Okay. Um, I know that there's a potato in this room. Um, oh, there's also the, the children's doll right there. And the potato is right behind you in the... Uh, no, not there. So you see... You, go a couple steps forward and then turn around. There's the... You see those baskets to your right? There's a potato in one of them. You might need to... Uh, you know, just 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 check out the basket. There should be a potato in there. Some in, in one of those should, should be potatoes. I think so. Or it's on top of the basket. Uh, sorry, on top of the. Um... Hey, there we go. You want go to sneak mode first though, because you might be getting watched. There we go. Aha, potato. And the last one is a human heart. Luckily, Gorlok for some reason always keeps one by his side. Uh, there's a little tray next to his bed wall. That should have a human heart. There we go. Awesome. Now let's chat. Let, let, let's let's check with him. <laughs> stolen my home from me. Speak before I cut out your tongue. Here. Potato heart doll. Good, good. Now for the fun part. The helmet of horns. Did you see the forsworn camp in the northeast of the Vole? They have what we seek. Go forth, kill them, devour them if you want. Take what is necessary in return with the Helm of Horns. In the meantime, I will put together a small surprise near the village. Oh yes, a great surprise. Awesome. So, Lalum, did you remember Don't the... Worry, I will have everything ready soon enough. Remember the, the mountain that I told you not to climb in the beginning? Yes. Now's the time to go do it. If you want to, you can... Um, you can quick warp back to the entrance of Hessel's Nest. There should be a map marker there. But uh, Hessel's Nest passed. Yep. Just fast travel there. And see the mountain? Go climb it. You can just follow the, the path. And um, keep left. You know, there's a couple of spikes and a couple of traps here and there. But eventually you're going to make it to one of the four zone camps. Uh, where you can do what the dragon one does best. And um, Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Someone's got the game loop down to a T. And this is also the reason why you should only enter Hester's Nest once you're like level 10 or 15 or so. Uh, there's a couple of people here. That's it, isn't it? Awesome. Look at that. The Helm of Horns. Um, now we've got some awesome uh, helm. You'll love it. Um, turn that back to the camp and give it to Gorloch, who will be doing some sort of, trip of, of, of ritual. And also for a little, an, another little Easter egg, um, head back to the stairs where you've gotten the, the thing, 
and to your left there should be a um, a tree trunk somewhere that's like a, a dead tree um, uh, maybe go a bit more uh, turn a bit more right that's yeah that that you know yeah that one see that tree trunk or that that, 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 that dead tree over there go climb it there's something at the very top of it so just as a quick heads up um, I've hidden a lot of stuff and this is just one of them aha <laughs> yeah uh, the entire uh, valley is full of small things like this but it's time to head back to the camp so either take the leap of faith or do the fast traveling whatever you're in the mood for Hey. Yeah, who needs God mode? As he was saying, Goloch has prepared a little ritual. Um, oh. That's a very long horse hide, wasn't it? I hope you're all in, 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 in awe of a ritual to, 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 to Namibia, the Prince of Darkness. What happened? Why did the fire ignite? One thing after another. You asked about the rituals of old. Now, take this and eat. Oh, goodness. Is that a heart? Lady of Decay, here are woods. You, who takes great care of the ugly of the forgotten, I have brought you a gift. You think I'm ugly? Perhaps, but more importantly, you are stupid. Don't deny it, you cannot read and therefore cannot hope to hold respect in civilist society. I, I can, I just... But do not despair, child. Namura will not hold that against you. Eat the heart and be accepted as who you truly are. Anelia, I grant you the honor of first Anelia. Damn it, go. <laughs> what? Someone didn't like that? She ran off, didn't she? There aren't many who'd listen to my teachings. I thought Analia was different. She was always so excited to hear about our history. Yes, you're right. I'll try again. Later, much later. Either way, I'm not one for waste. I'll keep hold of the heart. Let it ripen a bit before I... Uh, here, just take the pot of it. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so... The quest is not completely done though. Um, there's one thing left, uh, which is. Hang on. Can you open up the document for that? Um, <laughs> the second. Uh, right. Um, yeah, next up you just need to check with Analia again. She should be found somewhere in the Nessing Mad Hedge. Yeah, there's a bit of a bit of post quest convo. <laughs> so 
So we're just going we're just going to to head back to the um, to the camp or to the city, and well, let's chat with Nalia for a bit. Should be somewhere here. Um, um check inside the the inn. That might be where, that, that might be where she is. Much history to catch up on. The world moves quickly. I don't suppose it did. I think Gorlich is a great storyteller, and he's taught me so much about the Reach, but none of my training prepared me for what happened, and I don't mean to sound ungrateful, but I didn't like it, not at all. I suppose I'm sure the guild would love to hear of it. Gorlach was just trying to help me, right? I'll be sure to have a lotus to him later. Thank you. I think that's it. That should be it, isn't it? Um, yeah. I'll see I think that's... I hope. I think the quest just ends here. Um, there's a scene afterwards. But I don't know if the scene actually ends the quest here. It should. Hmm. Let's see. Yeah. There's a couple more scenes uh, between the two of them, but they only really trigger when um, they just, you know, vibe together. Yeah, these scenes are fairly rare to trigger because of the schedule. That is something that we need to work on for the next one. Um, exactly, it's a writing mistake. Um, we did the scenes first and then the schedules later. And I think we didn't really chat. So essentially each writer had one NPC. And I forgot to check that... If, I, I forgot to check if the writers actually talked to one another about uh, the schedules of the NPCs. But yeah, um, that's all the quests we have for Hester's Nest. Um, yeah, now we can take a look at the southern side. So, um, there's a lot that we haven't actually explored. Um, all of this area was supposed to make appearances in different quests, but those quests didn't make it, but the areas did. Um, so, depending on how people feel, we can either uh, edit here, or, 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 or we can just do some more exploration. What do you think? Since I know that some people have a meeting coming up. Um, so, all of this is essentially just um, exploring and seeing what the, what the uh, level designers made. We we do not we do not have microtransactions. Ah, right, yeah. Yeah, we can that's a good idea. Okay. Uh let's head first to Nelos area. Which is in the southeast. Uh, 
uh, Zalit, um, your character was right at the beginning. Your character was who uh, kickstarted this entire thing. Of the mountain camp. Mm. Oh yeah, the other one. Yes, we've got two mountain camps. Yeah, um, we'll upload a VOD to this thing later uh, on YouTube. And you can also always just download the mod for yourself and see what level designers have done with this place. Because it's gorgeous. Yeah, just go further southeast and you'll eventually come across the border region. So this was a level designed by me. Uh, I think my first actual like, exterior LD experience. So yeah, it was fun. Uh, but yeah, just follow the road to the right. Right, now we are at the unused Remmer Ruin. Um, if you are a fellow modder, for example, who wants to you know, do some practice, there's nothing stopping you from modding this mod. Um, this is the Remmer Ruin of... Oh god, Jason Cleft? Jason Cleft? I don't know. Um, it was never sent by, ne by Neldor, who also worked as the um, implementing lead for this mod. That looks gorgeous. So yeah, the doors are shut. Um, there's no speak, friend, and enter, unfortunately. Despite us being friends with 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 Barshark. Um, and this is the region that Neldor essentially levels out on his own. So every exterior had like we we we, we split the entire map into five exterior claims and we eventually we essentially had four exterior level designers uh Kenny and mike did two of them somewhere. Let's see. Um, I'm clearly not reading chat well enough. Um, well, three. Also the borders. Yeah, right. Also the borders. Oh. Knife point bridge. Is that a location in here? Uh, Yep, it is. No, it's not. Uh, can you check the map to see where Knife Point Ridge is? It might be in the same... It might be the... Revenge Ruins? Uh, hmm. Oh, it's in Skyrim. Okay, never mind then.
Okay, now we are heading uh, west, which is the region that... Um, well, I think this part is still Neldor's work. And now we are soon uh, coming closer to what Isaac the Wizard made. Um, Isaac is a... Yeah, yeah. We are soon coming to it. Close. In, in a bit. Um, Isaac's a level design teacher here at the AU. And also a level designer, a level designer for Sky Oblivion. Um, so, yeah. Again, this, this uh, world space is huge. So I don't think we can actually show off every little detail. Uh, okay. Yeah. Um, Just take another peek at yeah that that tower in the distance, you can climb it. <laughs> Isaac pulled everything into his little quadrant, and this is the uh, the fossil camp that Nelda made, as far as I know. Uh, that's not a force one. And this is the Fossil Camp that Nelda has been working on. Um, I think it even has a name. And he has Nostril, there we go. Yeah, so we had the uh, the naming scheme that every name or every location is two words that start with the same uh, first letter. So we've got, we've got Amira's Nostril, we've got the Ruined Rubble, Friendly Fire, um, you can see the uh, the pattern there. Tattoo tunnel, exactly. I mean, that tail is is a I don't know. Um, that's a tale that the the guy who summoned the flame of Knights needs to tell. But yeah, so um, let's see what I said to say about this this, this region. Um, we used we we technically planned for a couple more quests in here in Hesos Nest, and we have planned that I think we planned originally two. Uh, four sawn camps. Each one of them to be used in a quest, but that didn't really come to fruition. Um, I can tease some stuff though. So, uh, a an unused quest. It's it's um, it's written. It just needs implementation. <laughs> Is the message in a bottle, where um, Ben Alik, the politician from Daggerfall. Was planning to, um, to 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 leave a message to her beloved to her to her beloved Mila and and smuggle a, and smuggle a message from Hester's Nest to Daggerfall. Um, and the other quest would have been the Swan Song, which would have taken place in the Demo Ruin. You would have given the old Britian um, a lovely last adventure. 
to a dangerous lemma room and also take everything that you can with you. I think that's actually one more. Yeah, there was one more uh, quest. Uh, Misery Loves Company. Where you would have um, done stuff. Done. Check. Uh, it's been a couple of months. Yeah, so we do have a lot of stuff left open. Um, but we don't have the time for that anymore. Um, Essentially, um, Anissa attempts to lighten the mood at the campsite uh, and, and she recruits the player to help. The player sent together ingredients for a potion that can cure one of the um, fellow NPCs' injuries. Because the, the, friend of the campsite has an NPC who uh, landed in Hester's Nest after um, Let's say after being volunteered to join uh, the Skyrim space program, thanks to a giant club. Skyrim space program, yes. <laughs> that was a joke written prior to Starfield though. Prior before we knew how to, you know, we knew some stuff about it. Um, essentially, the the idea was that uh, it was an imperial soldier who got hit really hard by a giant club and landed in in Hester's nest with a lot of injuries, which kept him from leaving this place. And yeah, this is now the region that uh, Isaac the Wizard, one of our LD teachers, level designed. As as you can tell, um, top notch. <laughs> I'm on my way to Windhelm oh. to join up with the Stormcloaks. Ulfric has the right of it. I think if they were to go to Windhelm, um, I think they would. <laughs> they took a wrong turn somewhere. And if you if you take a look upwards at the yeah, Adam, just look up. Um, there might be a. You see those 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 two pillars with one having a little nudge over there. Um, Isaac made a a bit of a joke. Um, if you were to kindly go up that place and and check out what's what's what, what's laying on top of that 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 pillar there. That'd be great. Um, essentially, Isaac and Pedro, one of our uh, moderators, and also Levelzanit, oh, one of our one of our Levelzan teachers, um, they both just came cackling to me and showed me the thing, and I liked it as well. So just try if you can just 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 go there and have a little look at it, and also take a look into this rune here. But I think the little Easter egg comes first. It's the left of those two. That one, yeah, the left one. The one that you can get. <laughs> the grey man. Who, who told someone that they shall not pass. Um, yeah, they, 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 they both just cackled to me and it's, it's yeah, you need, you need to show this. And here I am. So, this is a Lord of the Rings reference, for those that didn't get it. Um, about Gandalf, who, who's just hanging, you know, just, just hanging around, just vibing at the edge of a broken bridge. You need to aim a bit higher. <laughs> I 
That's the right man up here. Unfortunately, they 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 don't. Um, but we've got a great visit, and one more force on camp to kill. Yeah, it might be related to either add god mode or all that. Hey, there we go. Killing the fourth one like a true nord. Um, yeah, so this is the final like dungeon that we've got that we have planned. Um, guess what? It's a four zone camp. <laughs> um, it looks really good though because it's it's an overhang. As far as I understand it, this thing was a lot of trouble to level to level design, but I think it was worth it because it looks really good. It's awesome, yeah. Also, one of the things that, that Skyrim didn't do uh, either. They didn't really have caves that were connected to the exterior. Yeah, so I think next up we can just continue our ascent to the Hammerfell border. We're just following that path over there. And just marvel at the view. This is technically the the border uh, to, to Hammerfell, if we were to just follow the, the path up here. Um, although it's supposed to have been made inaccessible by uh, a landslide or like a, a snowstorm. Mm. Because, well, this, this whole place is supposed to be between Hammerfell and, and, and Skyrim. Uh, so we thought, hey, let's just make a big abandoned trade route. And that was like the major gist behind the entire thing. Like, oh yeah, let's let, let's make a valley that's somewhere between Skyrim and Hammerfell. That has been just completely abandoned and that used to be a trade route. Yep, and it's open mic time. So, 
this we've kind of reached the end of our little uh, walkabout. We don't have any more to show. Uh, that, that that you can't um, look out or, or, or look up for yourself. So yeah, you're all welcome to unmute yourself, and yeah. Thanks a lot. It's nice. So yeah, um, that's kind of the end of Hester's Nest. Um, apart from the stunning view that we've got here. But I'd say that everything is even better if you actually look at it uh, in person on your own screen because you know there's only so much we can show you through a Discord stream. Exactly, and feel free to just ask any questions. Uh, if it's HNT, the AU, student collaboration projects, Beyond Skyrim, Oblivion, Skywind. I think we've got someone from almost every team in here somehow. So yeah, you're all welcome to unmute and just to, I don't know, chill out. Yeah, this is the, the, the closed border gate. Um, pool's closed. We can't let anyone um, in there because, well, that's past our, our little valley. And we only was, we were only meaning to, to make the valley. I just want to say that there's still a lot of little details and stuff that you can find in Hestra's Nest. So when we release the mod on Nexus, you can go ahead and download it and explore for yourself. It's always better to experience it firsthand than watch it on stream. Yep. And in my opinion, this world space is a great, great space to like practice stuff. So if you have any ideas for like... Uh, I don't know, different buildings that you want to add, you can always do it in Hester's Nest because it has a lot of free space and a lot of possibilities. It's a good training ground. So yeah, thank you for attending. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Thanks for watching, thanks for attending. Uh, thanks for sticking with us for the entire like two and a half hours. And yeah. Hendris, where can they download this mod and when? Yes, we can, you can download this at Nexus Mods. Um, I think we are going to either, we already have either uploaded it or we are going to upload it. Um, someone made the, someone made a, uh, a page for the Academy University, but I don't know where it is actually. I don't have the link to it. <laughs> um, so, yes, um, once this is done, we are trying to upload it to Nexus Mods. And I think we're just going to pop an announcement that it is available for download, and then we'll just pop down the link.